Um, Sila Bhattaparabhasa, there is um, a, my understanding of the um, uh, is 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 that it is a an assumption of uh, purification through precept and practice, so that if I just keep these practices uh, in a certain way, um, then I, you know if I'm really have a a real fidelity to keeping the practice in a certain way, uh, then uh, that's going to be a, a cause of my realization or purification. And the same, if I just keep the precepts uh, in, in a certain way, or strictly or however, um, I, I'll be purified through that. And And of course, it's not that we don't have precepts and it's not that we don't have practices that we do but we have to understand it's the, the kind of the causal process uh, and uh, uh, of how it functions and how it works and to not be assuming that if I just got it if I just got it right in terms of if I just kept the right precepts and I got the right practices down, then I would experience a purification of heart. So it's it's that that understanding of the place of precept and practice in that like that there 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 are fundamental. Um, precepts that we keep, uh, but then also, are we using them to, uh, like one of the things that, that Ajahn Chah used to emphasize, especially around precepts, um, but it's an extension to, to also various practices that we, that we, we take on. And he was someone who was incredibly strict. Uh, in, you know, as a considered a very, very strict monk. But he, he said, you have to understand that, say, precepts are for understanding volition, for understanding the movement of mind towards an object, this movement, so that, that we keep precepts, but they're a tool for understanding volition, understanding intention, understanding the what the mind is doing. And similarly, whatever practices we take on, um, they're also for understanding that volition of, of the heart, that the intention Going out to an an object, and and so that if we think that if we just keep the rules and 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 are really really diligent in our practice, then we'll we'll reach stream entry. Then we're positing an assumption that isn't isn't fully valid, or as, as a Jan child would say. Well, that's true, but it's not right. Or <laughs> it's right, but it's not true. Uh, and and so that there is a need for uh, this this you know say the 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 essence of the dhamma is always a kind of balance that we need to be be attending to. In the same way, say like the the, the say the eightfold path. Is is the the eightfold path leading to the cessation of suffering? And but it isn't that we have to reach some quantifiable level of each aspect of the path. It's when the path is in harmony and is balanced that it 
brings about that result of clarity, relinquishment, uh, release. Uh, so it's just, uh, so that 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 similar that that seal of Bhattabharvas is understanding the balance. <laughs>